Hello there, this is Dr. Norman Thomas, and welcome to tonight's edition of Power Talk. We have a, a good word lined up for you tonight, of course, and it's going to be talking about personal growth and how to experience that growth. And this is going to be a few weeks. We're going to walk through this study together. And I believe that at the end of this study, you'll know some concrete things that you can do to spark your growth and to promote your growth in Christ and in life in general. Okay, because remember, Christ is relevant to every aspect of your life. Listen to what Paul had to say in, uh, let's see, well, it's in, actually it's in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. He says, I want every one of you to give, and I want you to give not reluctantly, I want you to give cheerfully. I want you to give intentionally. I want you to give with an attitude of prompt to do it prompt to do it. It says, God will not do without a prompt to do it giver. He loves a cheerful giver. And so 2 Corinthians 9 and 7 says, let each one give as he's made up his own mind to give and purposed in his heart to give, not of reluctance, not of sorrow, and not of compulsion. This giving tonight is from the heart we're giving from this church, from the heart of this church. But there are ways to give tonight. You can give electronically. You can give through the mail, of course. And you can, you can um, I forget the other one, but it's on the screen. Just follow those instructions. Make sure that you make a conscious effort to stay constant in the tithe and in the offering. We're living in some very, very tough times today where the church needs to be the one to step up and manage the needs of humanity and by your giving we've been doing that here at New Life Church International all through this hardship season of life that not only us but the whole world is experiencing this and we've been able to give 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 be a blessing to people in so many ways only because you have been consistent in your giving here at New Life Church International father we thank you for this opportunity that you've given us to give we speak over our seed and we declare it blessed. We declare that we declare that the seed, the finances we sow, will produce a harvest that comes right back into our lives. That's according to the word, Luke 6, 38. And we declare that in Jesus' name. Blessings to you as you give tonight. Listen to these announcements and I'll be right back. Doctors Norman and Debbie Thomas invite you to the 2022 International Kingdom Summit, November 18th through the 20th. This year's guests will include Dr. Bill Winston, Todd Delaney, Apostle Wanda Rallone, and a host of international guests. This is a gathering of kingdom leaders in business and ministry. These three days are packed with dynamic sessions in the areas of kingdom entrepreneurship, visionary leadership, personal development, and the church redefined. Registration is required. Register today at normanthomas.org forward slash IKS. The School of Faith Bible Institute is an international ministry reaching 10 nations and five continents around the world. Founded by Drs. Norman and Debbie Thomas, the School of Faith has been critical to the growth of many pastors and leaders worldwide. Join us for the fall semester of School of Faith Bible Institute right here at New Life Church International from 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. every Tuesday evening Classes will include live instruction, virtual international guest lectures, study guides, exams, and a graduation ceremony. Registration is required. Go online to www.schooloffaithusa.org and register today.
We're excited to introduce three new ways you can give to our church. The first is text giving. You can give now, at home, or whenever you want simply by texting the word GIVE to our church's giving number. Once you receive your text reply, follow the prompts in your one-time registration to complete your gift. The second way is online giving. You can do this by going to our church's giving page and following the prompts to give. Log in by using your mobile phone number and secure PIN or your email and password. Once you've accessed your giving account, you can give a one-time gift or set up a recurring gift scheduled to go out on the date you choose. If you'd like to give to a specific area of our ministry, make sure to designate your gift using the Fund drop-down menu. The third way is giving through our app. Simply open our app and access the Give tab to complete your gift. If you don't have our app downloaded yet, just head over to the App Store and type in Church by Ministry One. Download the app and then search our church's name. If you have any questions about any of these ways to give to our church, feel free to ask one of our staff members for assistance. Thank you for your continued generosity to our church. Now, as a believer, well, let's, let me stick to my notes. Nothing grows unless you plant a seed, first of all. So when you're talking about growth, you got to remember a seed must be planted. You know, you just can't grow without a seed being planted. Many times people uh, don't think in terms of a seed, but when you go to a seminar, you're planting a seed. The time that you have given for that seminar the, maybe the, the expenses, the cost, uh, the lodging, the transportation that it took you to, to get there and to be in the presence of the presenter, all of that is a seed that you have sown into your own personal growth. But you gotta remember, seed, growth follows seed. So be thinking seed consciousness because that's where growth occurs. And I tell you what, <clears throat> the kingdom of God is based on seed-based living. And, and that's growth all the way around. So in order for you to grow personally in every way, seed must be planted for the area of growth for which you're expecting. So you cannot have expectation for growth in any area of life, any area of life, whether it's a relationship, whether it's a career or profession, whether it's finances, whether it's spiritual growth or emotional health or even mental health as we were talking about earlier. Now. So when I say seed, then the first question to me is where in the world do I get the seed to sow for the growth that I want? Well, if you know me, if you've been listening to me any length of time, you know exactly where I'm going with this. The seed is the word. That's where the seed comes from. It comes from the word. You say, oh, pastor, I knew you were going to take it right back to the word, but I'm just talking, listen, there is no growth without seed, and the Bible says, Jesus said, the word is the seed. He said it in Luke chapter 8, verse 11. When he taught on this concept of seed-based living, he said in Luke 8, 11, the seed is the word of God. The seed is the word of God. That comes right from the mouth of Jesus, so you can't get any better than that. So, I know you've heard it before, but... Perhaps you haven't practiced it, practiced it, practiced it to the highest level or for, for the expectations that you have in your life. So just think about it. What areas of life do you want to grow? What areas of life do you want to grow? Is it in sports? Is it in a hobby, developing a pastime, uh, something just for enjoyment? Maybe you don't have any enjoyment in your life, no recreation in your life. You just work, 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 and you don't rest, you don't recreate. You need to grow in the area of recreation. Well, you need to plant the seed for that growth in the area of recreation, and you'll experience a harvest there. So for the believer who desires to grow, the believer who desires to mature, and for those who aspire to become believers in Christ, your approach to the word must become a seed-based approach if you want to grow. My approach to the word of God must become a seed-based approach to the word if I desire to grow. So we must become planters. 
of the word in our hearts for the area for which we're trying to grow. Now, tonight, I'm going to look at number one, area number one. If you plan on experiencing growth, I'm going to go through five. Tonight is number one. It's very simple. It's called Be Intentional. Now, these notes, again, are on our website. These are my notes. They're on the website, and you can download them, or you can download them to your device or print them out at your leisure. Be intentional. Be intentional. In the book of St. Mark, chapter 4, Jesus is teaching on the concept of seed-based living. Seed-based living. Can I say something to you about that? Seed-based living is contrast to provision-based living. Yes. We generally live life, people generally live life to make a living. That's the general concept of life. I've got to go make a living. Well, when you study this out in the Bible, you find out that your living has already been made. It's been made by God and deposited inside of you. Now, your livelihood is within you. Your future is within you. Your destiny is within you. Everything that you're going to be is already inside of you. And if you don't go for it, you end up uh, becoming a copy of something else. But you, your future, your destiny is in your heart. And that's why Jesus talks so much about speaking from the heart because you plant when you speak the words into the atmosphere, into the arena of your life, and you're causing the harvest of your words spoken to sprout up around you. So here in this particular passage in Mark chapter 4, I'm going to read verses 3, 4, 14, and 15 because they all go together. Because on 3 and 4, he's teaching it. And on 14 and 15, he's explaining it. I want to tell you what happens between 3 and 4 and 14 and 15. In between there is this whole thing of the disciples asking Jesus to explain what he just taught. What he just taught is represented in 3 and 4. And then here's what Jesus said to them. You mean to tell me you don't know what I'm trying to say to you? you you're not getting this? This concept of seed-based living down? Here's what he said. If you don't understand this, then you literally don't understand anything else I have to say. That's powerful. And that gives you the level of importance this subject is. He says, you, this is fundamental, this is foundational, this is rudimentary, this, this, you got to get this. If you don't get this, you will misunderstand a lot of everything else I got to say. Most of whatever I got to say, you're going to misunderstand it because you haven't gotten this foundation. So let's look at what he taught in verse 13 and 14. Now the teaching in verse 3 and 4. The teaching is bigger than this, but we're, we're capturing the elements one lesson at a time. So just follow me. In verse 3, he says, listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed, or a farmer went out to plant his seed. And as he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. The word path is important because it gives you a description of the type of ground those seed fell on, the path. The path in the King James Bible is referred to as the wayside. In other words, it's not officially a part of the garden. It's on the wayside of the garden. I equate it to those parts of the garden. I remember my great-grandmother uh, doing this, and she would till her ground in the back of her yard, the side of her house there, and there would be rows. In between the rows would be paths. Those paths were for her to walk and to tend to the right and the left the rows in her garden. You don't plant in the path because the path is hard ground. It's, it's not tilled. It's compacted as a result of walking on it every day and attending to the mounds of the rows that are in the garden. You follow me? 
So just think about it like that. So when the seed falls on that part of the earth or that part of the ground in the garden or on the edges of the garden, it doesn't make it to the tilled ground. And when it doesn't, it remains exposed on top of that hardened, trodden path. My note says, personal growth never happens arbitrarily, nor does it happen accidentally. See, when that farmer scattered the seed, he did not scatter the seed intentionally. He scattered the seed and some fell on the right parts of the ground and others of it fell on the wrong parts of the ground. But let's keep reading. Look at verse 15. He, then Jesus now is, is on the explaining side of this, of this parable, this teaching, okay? This is after the disciples were confounded by what he was talking about. Then he tells them what I told you earlier. And now he's re-explaining his teaching, and, and we're capturing this portion of the teaching he's re-explaining. He says, some people are like seed along the path or the wayside. He says, where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, the word, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. You see, he's equating the fact that the birds would come and just pick that seed up off the hard ground and eat it. He's equating that to the enemy, to uh, the enemy coming and just robbing you of the word because you're not taking time or to intentionally plant that word in your heart. Growth is intentional. You plant what you desire to harvest and you plant the seed where you want it to grow. You don't just throw a seed out there and expect it to grow where it belongs or where you would like it to grow. Wherever you want the seed to grow, that's where you plant the seed. What you want to grow, that's what you plant. So you don't plant beans if you want corn. You have to plant corn. You want to plant it where you want it to grow. Otherwise, it'll just come up anywhere potentially, or the seed will hit that hard ground, that surface ground, and be taken by the birds of the air, or the enemy will come and rob that word from you. So, now let's relate this to our growth formula here. The former in our example, in our <laughs> example, scattered seed carelessly, and as a result, the seed did not make it to the tilled ground prepared to receive it. The aimless scattering of seed can be seen in our careless and casual attitudes regarding the word. Let me stop there. Just like that farmer goes and just scatters a seed, he's in a rush, he's in a hurry, he's, you know, whatever, you know. Well, there are people that treat the Word of God like that. They don't intentionally and purposefully feed themselves the Word. They get it on the go sometimes, you know, and I, that's not bad, but if that's all you're doing, it's sort of like fast food, you know what I mean? So you want to sit at the table you want to have a, a, a five-course meal. You want to make sure that you're getting everything that you need for nutritional value and for growth, or in this case, spiritual value and for growth. There are times when you will evaluate your own life and you, you know that you're slipping in this area or that area. Maybe you're not as patient with people as you should be. Maybe your words are not as kind as they should be. Maybe you get frustrated more often or stressed more often than you should. And th th that's when you want to make sure your meal is properly prepared so that you have what it takes to deal with that stress or to deal with that, that bad attitude or to deal with that, that, that shortness toward other people. You know, where if you find bitterness rising up inside of you toward someone or a group of people, maybe some old some old things rising back up, old spirits of racism or bigotry rising up inside of you. And if you don't have the proper nutrition to handle that, that thing will grow in your heart and, and become a harvest you don't want. So 
what are you intentionally seeding in you to deal with that? What are you intentionally seeding in you to deal with that fear that you have, that fear of loss, that fear of failure, that fear of stepping out, that fear of sickness or disease, that fear of losing your children to some misfortune or some, some other thing. You want to plant intentionally what you want to grow. So the aimless scattering of seed can be seen in our careless and casual attitudes regarding the Word of God. You want to meditate it, receive the teaching of it, and apply it. It's no good if you get the Word, get the Word, get the Word, and never practice what you get. You, you want to practice what you get. So if, if you get a word on divine health, practice divine health. Become a practitioner of it. If you get word on faith, practice faith. Find something to practice faith on. To practice your faith, to develop your faith in a particular area. To develop the receiving and the walking in divine health. Practice hearing from God if that's the word you're getting. Practice. So what people do, they hear the word, mm, that was good, that was good word. That's, you know, how people do. But then they don't take it past the door of the church when they leave. They may get to the car with it, but by the time they get out of the parking lot, it's gone. And because they haven't purposely decided, I'm taking this, I'm planning this inside of me, I'm meditating it, I'm germinating it, and I'm going to practice it. So I believe that we can fellowship with God organically anytime, all the time, wherever, whenever, however. But I also believe that there is something to be said about discipline, about a time that you set aside to receive and plant word in you. You know, some people get up early in the morning. Some people uh, stay up late at night. Some people carve out time during the day. But they are intentionally setting a little time aside to get that word in their hearts and in their minds. They're nurturing that growth. They are developing that growth in that particular area. So you, what you don't want to do is be one who continues to struggle in a particular area. Say it's unforgiveness. You know, say it's anger. Whatever case. But you keep struggling and you keep struggling and you keep struggling in it. Year after year after year, you know, if you don't, if you don't mend it or, or, or tend to it, rather, it gets worse over time. Now, you may not feel it getting worse because it's a subtle development. In other words, if you don't intentionally plant the Word of God for growth, then you are, by default, growing the wrong way. You're growing the opposite way. So, let's just do that. Let's just take time to plant and to practice. Now, the seed landed on the trodden path, on the wayside. Remember that hard part of the garden where the ground was not tilled, and the seed just lay there exposed on the surface. So for many people, the Word of God has only reached the surface level. Now, when I say the surface level, I, meant, I mean the intellectual level, the logical level, the mental level, but has not made it into the soil, into the heart, at the heart level. And the reason, again, is because they don't meditate it, they don't practice it. They don't intentionally dig and let that seed go inside. So the seed of God's word is introduced to the mind, so the mind has a part to play, but it must be meditated, germinated in the heart for there to be personal growth outcomes. So my point to you in this is that if you don't intentionally plant, you are going to experience growth the wrong way. 
Let me read to you something here. It's over in Isaiah chapter 51, and it's verse 16. <clears throat> Listen to this. Now, this is the prophet Isaiah. So the prophet is speaking, which means that God is speaking through him to his people. Today, that's you and I. That's you and I. That's you and I. So God is speaking to us through the prophet Isaiah. He's one of the major prophets we're called, like Jeremiah and Ezekiah. But listen to this. Ezekiel, rather. But listen to this. God says, I have put my mouth, I have put my words in thy mouth. I have put my words in thy mouth. God's saying, I'm putting my words in your mouth. Why are you doing that? He goes on and says, and I have covered you with the shadow of my hand. So what do you think he's, what do you think he's protecting? He's put his word in your mouth. And now because of that, he's covering you with the shadow of his right hand. That's, that's a hand of mighty protection, almost militant protection. The right hand of God, powerful. He says, I'm just going to put the shadow of my right hand over you. That's, that's amazing. Because I've invested my word in inside of you. Now listen to what the intent is. It says, that I may plant the heavens. You hear the word plant? God says, if I put my words in your mouth, and I protect you as you release them. I'll get to plant heaven. So God considers his word a seed. He considers the word that he puts in your heart to speak over your life and over your realm of influence as a seed of heaven that introduces heaven's culture to that terrain. See, he wants heaven's culture to rest over your world of influence, to rest over your world, over your finances, over your health, over your family, over your livelihood, over everything that concerns you. He wants heaven's culture to rest on that. He says, I put my words in your mouth so that you can speak my words and plant, so that you can disperse the seed of heaven from your mouth, the attitudes of God, the virtues of God, the, the values of God, the morals of God. Let his words fill your heart and be released from your mouth. And, and he goes on and says, and, and, and that I may lay the foundations of the earth. There are things that need to be made right in the earth. You can see that clearly today. But it's going to require God's people to participate with him in speaking words that he give to them over their city, over their business, over their schools and their communities, over the, the, over the atmosphere of the community. In other words, let's speak and let's pray, let's declare, let's declare and decree that we have a peaceful city, that we have a peaceful neighborhood that, that, that crime has no place here. Murder has no place here in this community, in this city. We decree the peace of God over this city. You see, God wants to plant the heavens in your community, in your business, in your home, in your city, in your state, in your nation. So that is what we're talking about here tonight is... If you're going to grow, you got to be intentional. You say, well, you know, it's not supposed to be so, so strict and orderly. Listen, I'm just telling you. I'm not talking about being religious. I'm talking about being intentional. Listen, <laughs> you're intentional about everything else. You're intentional about making your money, aren't you? You're intentional about ordering your food at the restaurant. I've seen you do it. You're intentional. I, I've watched people take so much time to order a meal at a restaurant, you know, because they're being intentional about how they want their food to taste, what they want to experience in that moment in receiving that meal. Very intentional. 
But why is it then that when we come to the things of God, we think we can just be arbitrary? We can just be casual and just do it any kind of old way. You see, even now in today's world, I've been talking to a lot of pastors and they're saying, hey, you know, how do we get people to come back to church? Let's have a discussion about that. Because people have gotten accustomed to staying at home in their pajamas and watching church online. You know, and I, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. But I am questioning whether or not it's intentional planning. Because, you know, let's face it, being at home, you're not, you're not there. You know, just like being in, in college or in school, you're not in the classroom. And by not being in that classroom, so many distractions. You're so exposed and so vulnerable to distraction. You know that's true. The question is, is whether you're intentionally seeding and sowing in your heart. Growth happens intentionally. Be intentional. Be intentional. Be intentional. I'm not saying be so rigid that you, you religialize, religialize everything and become religious about everything. No, but I'm saying be intentional about where you're going and how you're growing. We're going to talk more. We've got four more keys to give you. And each week we're going to go through one. It's been my pleasure to be with you tonight. This is Dr. Norman Thomas saying keep walking by faith. And thank you for joining me tonight for Power Talk. Doctors Norman and Debbie Thomas invite you to the 2022 International Kingdom Summit, November 18th through the 20th. This year's guests will include Dr. Bill Winston, Todd Delaney, Apostle Wanda Rallone, and a host of international guests. This is a gathering of kingdom leaders in business and ministry. These three days are packed with dynamic sessions in the areas of kingdom entrepreneurship, visionary leadership, personal development, and the church redefined. Registration is required. Register today at normanthomas.org forward slash IKS. The School of Faith Bible Institute is an international ministry reaching 10 nations and five continents around the world. Founded by Drs. Norman and Debbie Thomas, the School of Faith has been critical to the growth of many pastors and leaders worldwide. Join us for the fall semester of School of Faith Bible Institute right here at New Life Church International from 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. every Tuesday evening Classes will include live instruction, virtual international guest lectures, study guides, exams, and a graduation ceremony. Registration is required. Go online to www.schooloffaithusa.org and register today. excited to introduce three new ways you can give to our church. The first is text giving. You can give now, at home, or whenever you want simply by texting the word GIVE to our church's giving number. Once you receive your text reply, follow the prompts in your one-time registration to complete your gift. The second way is online giving. You can do this by going to our church's giving page and following the prompts to give. Log in by using your mobile phone number and secure PIN or your email and password. Once you've accessed your giving account, you can give a one-time gift or set up a recurring gift scheduled to go out on the date you choose. If you'd like to give to a specific area of our ministry, make sure to designate your gift using the Fund drop-down menu. The third way is giving through our app. Simply open our app and access the Give tab to complete your gift. 
If you don't have our app downloaded yet, just head over to the App Store and type in Church by Ministry One. Download the app and then search our church's name. If you have any questions about any of these ways to give to our church, feel free to ask one of our staff members for assistance. Thank you for your continued generosity to our church.